We're opening today's special security edition with the aftermath of a series of deadly terror attacks in Jerusalem. The security cabinet held an emergency meeting on Saturday night to take steps to stop the violence. On Friday night, a lone gunman murdered seven at a Jerusalem synagogue. And then on Saturday morning, a Palestinian child terrorist shot and wounded two in the old city of Jerusalem. The security cabinet announced several steps following the terror attacks. Here's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu ahead of that meeting with a summary. I will bring to the cabinet tonight additional measures to fight terrorism. This includes significantly speeding up and expanding gun licensing for licensed citizens. As we have seen time and time again, including this morning, this thing saves lives. Also, I will bring before the cabinet the denial of rights and the national insurance from families that support terrorism. This government will act firmly, decisively and powerfully against terrorism, and we will do it calmly and decisively. We are not looking for escalation, but we are prepared for any scenario. I call again to the citizens of Israel. Do not take the law into your hands. We are not in the days of the underground. We have a sovereign country with an excellent army, government and security forces. The cabinet also aims to deploy additional soldiers and police nationally, as well as form intelligence task forces to sweep up illegal gun operations. The security body also immediately moved to seal the home of Friday's terrorist in preparation for a demolition. Funerals were held last night for three of the victims. The youngest victim, just 14 years old, a boy, Asher Natan, was buried in the Jewish cemetery on the Mount of Olives. He had left home alone to join friends for a Sabbath meal when he was murdered. Another funeral was in Beit Shemesh. Ellie and Natalie Mizrahi were a married couple. They rushed outside to help when they first heard gunfire and they were shot down at point blank range. Other victims have been identified as Rafael Ben Eliahu, 56 years old, Shao Chai, 68 years old, Irina Karolova, 59, and Ilya Sosansky, just 26. There were clashes flaring in East Jerusalem between Palestinian rioters and security forces. And meanwhile, a Palestinian armed with a handgun was shot dead by security outside the settlement of Kadumim. National Security Administrator Itamar Ben-Gvir is demanding a heavier response to such terror attacks and a much more immediate one. His ministry will be responsible for expanding firearms licensing. He also said he would propose a law allowing the death penalty to be used against terrorists and believes it will pass with widespread support. Let's take a quick listen. There is the issue of the weapons. I want weapons on the streets. I want the citizens to be able to defend themselves. We saw it today at an attack in the city of David, when citizens have weapons they can defend themselves. That's why I instructed my office, but I also need the assistance of the Ministry of Finance, and I will raise this in the cabinet as well. We need to bring more people to the Division for Firearms Licensing, and allow us to give weapons to citizens who want and are qualified. I also want to ease the criteria. Other things, death penalty law for terrorists, I am asking to expedite the legislation, I will raise it today in the cabinet and also tomorrow in the government meeting. I want to pass the death penalty law for terrorists, in my opinion it is appropriate and required. And one more thing, I talked throughout the week about the police reform that I want to do it, and it should be done as soon as possible. A national guard should be formed tomorrow morning. Now to break down all of these issues for us, we're joined by Jack Neria, the former head of assessment at Israeli military intelligence. Thank you very much for joining us, Jack. Good morning, yeah. I want to continue on a topic of discussion that we've had a lot lately, and that's the idea is, is Israel heading into a third intifada? And from a security perspective, what does that mean? Well, you know, we like to use the word intifada and instead of saying that uh, it's uh, popular uh, the riots, uh, popular the demonstrations, and it's uh, it's an upheaval. The Palestinians are trying to right, uh, to fight for their rights as they see that as, uh, as they see them, and we consider that as an intifada. Uh, the the term is that we are in crisis. We are in a state of crisis between us and the Palestinians, and uh, right now the rift between us is going and getting wider. Why? Why? Because on the, on the, both sides are getting more extreme. Both sides are expressing uh, the positions that are very difficult to bridge. And certainly, with the absence of the Palestinian Authority, which is out of uh, out of the game, the, we find ourselves clashing with entities that are not organized, unorganized entities. And everybody there is trying to. I mean, it's it's havoc on, 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 on the ground. And in this area, this is very difficult to implement any policy. And any policy you do is not enough. I mean, uh, you cannot go too far because the world will stop you. We are signed uh, uh, on agreements that uh, don't allow you to do more than what you're doing today. And so. 
suddenly when you are facing uh, uh, issues like uh, Israeli citizens, Arab citizens, Palestinian citizens living in, Jer in East Jerusalem, then there is a problem of legality. What to do there? The, uh, it, it doesn't surprise me that sealing the house was done at night. Not to give the, the 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 lawyers the time to go to the higher court of justice, which which would have stopped the the, the act of of sealing. You're talking about uh, several steps that uh, the, the government has has adopted, but all those steps will will require to go to the Knesset legislation and will take time. And when you talk about social security, let's be frank: uh, Israel's social security has paid between the years 2019-2022 for three families. 20,000 shekels. So what are we talking about? The, 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 really, I mean, the, the, we, we are waving, uh, we are waving words, and we are waving uh, sort of uh, uh, slogans, and uh, there's nothing behind. On the, I just want to no, interject here because while we're talking about the policies passed by the security cabinet or that's proposed by the security cabinet, I would like to just bring up the list on screen so our viewers can go through it as we discuss the efficacy of each one. Uh, so bring up that list, please. But we're discussing on one side there's the social and preventative, and there's also the direct security yeah, ones. Where, where, where is the where? where Where's the enemy? It, you, you don't have here a faction. You don't have an entity. You don't have a cell. When you have a cell, you just attack it, and we uh, we attacked in Janine. But basically, we are talking about lone uh, lone wolves who are just waking up in the morning, uh, getting a, a divine revelation. Let's go and kill Jews. This is what we're the, 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 what, what we are talking about. And then let's talk about the 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 the, uh, uh, the 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 idea of letting more people have weapons. Okay, the the, the licensing more people. On the one hand, the prime minister says don't. Don't take the law in your hands. Don't take the. And then on, on the other hand, you say, okay, take as many weapons as, uh, as you want. And this is really a contradiction. The, uh, you, you cannot give weapons to the people. And then you'll have. We had that in the past. Uh, Israelis hit uh, the sh shooting at Israelis because he thought that he was a terrorist. Well, I mean, how effective would it be in practice? Because we've seen that the number of weapons has actually been decreasing over the years. The amount of active permits has been cut down. But simultaneously, we had these two attacks in Jerusalem. One of them was ended virtually instantly by one of the victims being armed. The other one, the terrorist was able to kill seven before he was stopped. I mean, would it help to have at least some more on the streets? Well, you, you don't know. Most, I mean, weapons are there. People don't carry those weapons on, on the street because they have chosen to leave them at homes. It, there's enough weapons if we, if we take all the weapons that are right now, are, uh, we don't need to license more. This is definitely not, not the case. And then you're talking about the, the so-called civilian who, who, who shot the, the, the kid, the 13 years old. It, he was an officer. He was an officer in the army, and he did his job. And so, I mean, uh, when 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 need is there, we have the, we have the means. We don't have to just to expand because of populism and say, okay, let's go, and everybody will have their, their arms. What are we talking about? The French Revolution. Well, I mean, it does lead to one qu last question very briefly. If these people are lone wolves and there's no network supplying them, that means there's no trace until they strike. That means that there's no preparative or intelligence solution to these attacks, is there? And if there's not, the only solution would thus be immediate counterforce. Well, you know, what is what is here essential, and this is the paramount uh, uh, the issue, is intelligence. Intelligence, we have to penetrate all those, the, all this milieu. And uh, as uh, they did yes, uh, the day before yesterday, they, they arrested about 40 people around who knew this, uh, the, 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 this terrorist. And just, you just throw a stone and you get circles and you get gold circles and circles. And so it, it's, a long, it, it's a long shot. It's not easy. But uh, finally, you have the, the, the social media. Most of them express themselves in the social media. You have to, uh, to be very, uh, very careful about and follow the social media and see whoever, who, who wants uh, to go and, and say, okay, uh, Allah has uh, revealed himself to me and I'm going to, to, to kill Jews. And we find that in the social media. So if this is the case, let's, uh, let's concentrate on that. Okay, so it's certainly it sounds like intelligence needs to be a lot more on the ball than they have been over Definitely the past year, so. particularly over the last weekend. Thank you very much for joining us, Jack.